So I had this cool idea to paint my Monstera in a looser, more abstract way, inspired by seeing its shadow on the wall. I thought it would be quick and easy, loose and carefree. And that's where everything went wrong. This is the story of how my favorite watercolor supply, which most people don't use, saved the day and made my second attempt at this painting much, much better. The idea was to paint the shadow of my plant on a white background. I wanted to paint one big connected shape with beautiful color transitions across the leaves. I transferred my line drawing to my watercolor sketchbook and mixed up the luscious greens and blues I imagined in my head. I propped up my sketchbook on an angle, grabbed my small dagger brush, and started painting. But I quickly felt overwhelmed. I was trying to paint around the holes and form the shape of the leaves and the vines, all while switching between different colors and trying to work fast to connect all the shapes while the paint was wet. I loved the idea of this painting, but actually painting it was a different story. I felt rushed. I was anxious that the paint would dry too fast to connect everything. I was trying to stay inside the pencil lines while changing colors and linking all the shapes without blooms or back runs. It was a very stressful 16 minutes. As a result, my edges were sloppy, I had visible pencil lines under the paint, and my color blends were anything but smooth. When I got to the bottom of the page, the top part was too dry to go back and adjust any colors or edges. I was stuck with the colors I laid down. Clearly, this process wasn't working for me, and the frustration I felt while painting shows in the finished art. Instead of loose and fresh, it looks awkward and forced. But I still liked the idea and I wanted to get it out of my head and onto the paper. So I decided to try another way. I needed help controlling the paint so I could fill in the color more freely. Enter masking fluid. I figured if I used the masking fluid to outline the entire plant and mask the holes in the leaves, it would allow me to paint more freely and focus on the color transitions I wanted to achieve. This was my first time using the colorless masking fluid and it's now my favorite. When I'm filming tutorials, I still use the blue stuff because it's easier to see on video. But this colorless masking fluid is a game changer. It disappears into the paper and lets you see the colors and values you're painting more clearly. And there's no risk of it staining the paper, which can sometimes happen with the blue stuff. I didn't want a blue halo around my plant. Because the colorless masking fluid matches the paper, it's hard to see where you've applied it. But I figured out a solution for that too. I applied the masking fluid on my light pad, which helps with two things. One, it's easier to see where I apply it. And two, it eliminates the pencil lines on my paper. I simply put my drawing underneath my watercolor paper and use it as a guide for where to apply the masking fluid. I call this the outlining method. It's one of the seven masking fluid techniques I cover in my free ebook, Masking Magic. Get your copy of Masking Magic at the link in the description below the video. The masking fluid application takes a little patience, but it's worth it. With the masking around the entire plant shape and in all the gaps, I was able to quickly wet the leaves and vines so I could paint them wet on wet. Adding the clear water first gave me extra time to apply my colors, and I didn't have to work from top to bottom or worry about connecting the shapes. They all flowed together on their own, beautifully contained by the masking fluid. This is so good, it feels like cheating. But it's not. 
I think we owe it to ourselves to use whatever tools and techniques we need to find our flow and create our vision. I think anything that makes the painting process more enjoyable for you isn't cheating. Because I was able to apply the paint quickly and without a lot of fuss, the finished painting looks a lot fresher and the colors seem more translucent. I was able to get a base coat on everything and then go back while it was still wet and drop in more color to select areas. Instead of 16 stressful minutes, this was six minutes of pure joy, painting outside the lines, sloshing color around, and letting the watercolor do its thing. This felt loose and carefree. I was in the flow and relaxed. It just took a little extra preparation. And the benefits of masking fluid don't stop there. The masking fluid also gave me a golden opportunity to add another layer of color lined up perfectly over the first layer. I could add whatever I wanted and know I would still have nice, crisp edges when I removed the masking fluid. So I took that opportunity to darken some of the vines and separate a few of the leaves with shadows. I also made the leaf in the bottom right corner much darker. It was easy and quick to correct that value. The masking fluid does add one more step at the end of the process, but it's super satisfying to peel off. For full step-by-step -step instructions on how to apply and remove masking fluid, download my free ebook, Masking Magic. Look for the link below the video. In the end, I think the results speak for themselves. You can see the painting approach drastically changed the outcome. With the masking fluid approach, the color transitions are much smoother, the edges are neater, and it was so much more fun to paint. I know masking fluid isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I can't imagine my process without it. I hope this inspires you to find a process that works for you and that makes you feel more creative and in the flow because the amazing art in your mind deserves to be brought to life.